This week in Santa Fe, committee meetings are the place where some of the most important action is taking place. And our correspondent Gwyneth Dolan followed a proposal to cap interest rates for short-term loans like title loans here in New Mexico. Here's her report from the Roundhouse. Lawmakers in Santa Fe this week heard testimony about a series of proposals that would cap interest rates on title loans and other types of storefront loans. Representatives of the companies told lawmakers in a committee that the proposals would kill jobs and put their companies out of business, leaving those who take out the loans with nowhere else to go. Meanwhile, faith leaders testified in support of the cap, saying that the companies preyed on the most vulnerable. And it has a really deleterious effect on families, on people who, who can't spend their money on other things and they, they get trapped and they have to somehow have to go to bankruptcy. It is, is not a good way. And from our point of view of people of faith, it is immoral to trap people in this kind of debt. And, uh, and when, as we all, if, if any of us gets caught and trapped in debt, it's hard, but it's especially hard for people on the lowest end of the income scale to get trapped in debt because they, they drown, they can't get out. We save people from a lot of things via our law, via our, our community, and, and, and our community and our laws are what we say in community is valuable, and our values, we save people from drugs, we save people from even speeding down the highway that endangers the rest of us. We do a lot of that. Business plans and businesses that are designed and engineered solely to take advantage of the poorest people in the state of New Mexico are not just wrong, it's immoral. And this practice has to stop to, be, to continue to charge the poorest New Mexicans hundreds or thousands uh, percent interest uh, on these small loans, uh, knowing that people take these loans out in moments of uh, severe need or desperation uh, it is, is truly a, a moral uh, crisis. Both bills uh, address the issue of predatory lending and the exploitation of the most vulnerable in our communities. This is, I represent a district that has the highest foreclosure rate in the state of New Mexico. It has the, one of the highest poverty rates in the state of New Mexico. And it is unconscionable for me and unbelievable that there are these short-term lending and predatory lending um, companies almost on every block, if not every two blocks, as you drive through not only my district, but the accompanying districts surrounding that area. It is not an issue of providing credit to the uh, vulnerable. It is an issue of these companies praying on the fact that we have citizens that are struggling to meet their indebtedness as it is to begin with, living at oftentimes a minimum wage, if not a lower than minimum wage, and having no access to cash or capital. And that's what's very important here, is that we have had responses from the industry saying, well, you know, we're affording them the opportunity to have cash. Well, you don't afford these populations the opportunity to have access to cash if it's a short-term fix, but they're going to remain indebted for years and years. So what starts out as a small um, need for a small amount of cash ends up being rolled over and rolled over and rolled over to encumber thousands of dollars of additional costs in interest. It is absolutely imperative that we, as, a Demo as Democrats and as responsible Republicans, and I'm sure that there are some responsible Republicans out there that represent the same type of constituents that I do, respond responsibly by supporting uh, a 36% cap. We lose approximately, according to our state agencies, $100 million a year is spent by poor people just on interest and fees alone. And 75% of those companies are from out of state. So that's money that's not turning over in New Mexico. People are not spending that on, their, on food for their children, on clothing, on transportation. In 2007, Congress passed a 36% cap on interest rates and fees for payday loans for military members. But that only applies to active duty service members, not veterans. I'm a veteran myself. I've been fortunate. I've managed to stay employed ever since I got out of the service and went through graduate school on the GI Bill and so forth. But I'm one of the lucky ones. 
back in the Defense Appropriations Bill of 2007. They included legislation which prohibited short-term lenders from a number of practices which were seriously afflicting the military services. A lot of people's careers were ruined, particularly enlisted men's careers were ruined because they got trapped into a cycle of borrowing from these short-term lenders. So the Defense Department reported to the Congress and Congress passed this legislation which outlawed most of these practices, although there are still a few loopholes. They strengthened it again in 2012 so that military personnel are protected from, the, you know, the lenders can go after them, but they'll be breaking the law and can get caught. And, but it doesn't apply to them once they've left the service. So veterans are particularly vulnerable, especially returning veterans these days who are having trouble finding jobs. So they're running out of money uh, and they get trapped into this cycle of lending from one of these short-term lenders. Uh, they have no protection. In that sense, they're no different than the rest of the low-income population of the state. And I'm not just concerned with the veterans. I really have a broader concern for low-income population in this state, which is, as you know, all the places where we rank at the bottom. And so they're especially vulnerable. Representative Gail Chasey also connected this legislation to cap short-term loans to priorities for the Democratic Party, like raising the minimum wage. There has to be a better way for these people. These people really are not qualified to have the kind of loan that is being afforded them. What they really need, these people, is they need a job, and they need a job at a decent living wage. And without, you know, without those, we're not really helping those people either. Many company representatives and lobbyists testified in committee. We tried to talk with them, but none would go on camera with us. The House Regulatory and Public Affairs Committee voted four to three along party lines to table both bills. Committee Chair Yvette Harrell said she wants to wait and see what the industry proposes before moving forward. For the latest updates on these bills and other coverage in our People, Power and Democracy project, go to NewMexicoInFocus.org.